This unit, the first unit in module five, is about the perspectives on learning and teaching we have been discussing during the first module. And I would like to make a link uh, uh, between the first module, the general perspectives, and the subject of this module, designing uh, learning environments, instructional design. Now, I would like to um, bring back in your memory the, 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 three, the three main perspective, perspectives we have been discussing, the behaviorist perspective, the cognitive perspective, and, and the constructivist perspective. And, and, and eventually, I, I would like to make a few remarks on the relationship between structure and content in the learning environment. First, the behaviorist, behaviorist perspective, learning as a response acquisition. Now, the idea here is that there is no purpose, there is no plan, there is no decision, there, are, there is no motivation. There is simply the learner who uh, is brought in a learning environment in which the conditions are manipulated in such a way that the learner can nothing do but learn, but improve, so to speak, uh, um, uh, the, the amount of correct behavior. Uh, even the word improvement is not, not, not completely appropriate. It's a matter of just increasing the amount of correct behavior by uh, reinforcing uh, uh, the, 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 the correct behavior. Uh, the law of effect. Every, every act which is followed up by a reward will be repeated in the future, will be more often. Uh, produced by the learner in the future. So we're not trying to influence um, or direct the attention of the learner, influence her, her or his motives. We just create the circumstances which uh, just lead to learning, so to speak. Um, the famous book by Robert Gagné in 1966, I think it was, is the, the conditions for, of learning in which Gagné explained this, this whole idea that you have to arrange the learning environment in such a way that the learner just simply learns. Okay, uh, it's a matter of active, being active, um, so the uh, responses should be elicited constantly, uh, should be uh, pro provided with uh, feedback, uh, reinforcement and also information, and there should be a gradual process of drill and practice, small steps towards the end goal, uh, increasing the number of and the amount of correct uh, behavior, the number of correct responses. At the time, uh, so we are talking about the 40s, the 50s, the 60s in, in, in the last century, there was a, a famous, let's say, application of this learning theory in education, which was called programmed instruction. And in programmed instruction, um, um, the, the designer simply creates an enormous amount of small steps of frames, as it is called. And each frame consists of a question uh, and, and, and the student has to provide an answer. And then uh, the, the student receives feedback, the correct answer, basically. And then the next question is posed, etc., etc. So there is a, a, a linear, uh, let's say, path sequence through uh, the learning uh, the, in the learning environment towards the goal. Uh, the sequence is the same for all students. There are no individual differences. And you can imagine that you can build machines uh, even in, in these early days of the computer, which offer these questions and which uh, en enable the students to answer the question and then uh, provides the correct response and then simply proceeds to the next frame. Uh, these these so-called uh, teaching machines have been developed uh, in the 50s and the 60s. And the idea was that by um, uh, providing uh, in such a controlled environment the right questions, the students should very efficiently learn to uh, the, 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 the required responses. And this should be the best way to teach students um, well, it, it has been applied in the United States and also in the Netherlands. There are also examples in various countries. 
But as, 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 as this picture already uh, shows, although it's supposed to be a sort of invitation to, to, to buy the teaching machine, it, it was endlessly boring. Uh, because you know these small steps, and 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 and, and because this simple route for each and every student is the same. So in, in the end, it was not a success. But it has been uh, developed to to a large extent by Skinner, of course, in the first place, and also other uh, researchers in the domain of uh, the behaviorist tradition. You can imagine. Okay. Now, now that so uh, once again, uh, drill and practice creating conditions for learning. Uh, with the goal to increase the amount of correct behavior. That's the behaviorist approach, learning as response acquisition. Now, the cognitivist approach is more complicated and uh, more or less mirrors the development of computers, the, the information processing model, as we have seen in module number one. Learning as knowledge acquisition. Here, instruction entails uh, providing students with information uh, and helping students to process this information. So we have a focus on process and product. In order to be able to provide the proper instruction, the teacher has to, uh, to analyze the task and decompose the task in component skills, sub-goals and component skills. A very in, in, important, um, let's say, step to be taken before the actual learning environment has, uh, can be arranged. There is a focus on process and product. And, uh, well, uh, the goal is, of course, here, mastery of the predefined complex knowledge and skills. So the teacher is in charge. Uh, the teacher creates the learning environment, designs the learning environment, but the students um, can find her or his own path in the learning environment to arrive at the predefined goal. Now, the difference with, with the, with the uh, behaviorist tradition is, in fact, that we allow programs to be branched here. So that the, uh, the answer of the student actually determines the next step to be taken. And this step may be different for, for different answers foreseen in the program. So you get this kind of, of, of you know, branching flowcharts, which do uh, represent the, the cognitivist tradition uh, in which learning is seen as knowledge acquisition. An interesting example, uh, you can imagine that there, there all kinds of software has been developed uh, in order to help um, designers to create learning environment based on such a flowchart. This is an example of, um, um, of um, authorware. I just took the, the picture from, from uh, uh, the World Wide Web and now I see that it's in fact an, a Finnish uh, program, so it's very difficult to understand what's happening here. But you can see the flowchart, that's the most important thing. And you can see that authorware, um, originally developed in the Apple environment on the Macintosh, uh, provides students, uh, the, the users, the designers, with the opportunity to, to you know, to, 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 cho to choose all these kinds of nodes in a flowchart and build the program according to the various nodes created. Uh, it's a very hierarchically organized uh, 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 program which, which will be de delivered to the learning environment and in which all nodes are designed from this total view, uh, from, the, from the structure uh, of which, which is offered by uh, the authoring tool, by authorware in this case. Okay. Now, that is the, the learning as knowledge acquisition approach in which we are uh, working towards far more complex, you know, learning environments, as you can see, as compared with the uh, behaviorist tradition. Now, the, the third uh, perspective, the, the constructivist perspective, uh, in this perspective, learning is seen as knowledge construction and uh, students construct knowledge instead of just simply process information the teacher is not the, the, let's say, the designer of the environment, or uh, let's say perhaps the teacher is the designer, but is not, you know, the director, uh, but is the facilitator, is the participant in the process of knowledge construction. We have seen the, uh, the example of the, of the community of learners, of learners in which the teacher, in fact, is also one of the learners uh, with specific, of course, responsibilities, but also a participant like the, the students. 
the focus is on, on the process and also on regulating the process. Um, and the goal is here to help students to develop knowledge and skills. Um, and uh, quality is here as important as quantity, uh, as compared, you know, again, with the behaviorist tradition. I have an example here as well, which is uh, taken from the work uh, by Janneke van der Pol, in which Monique Volman, Volman and myself were, the, were the, 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 the supervisors. It's her dissertation work. Janneke developed a model for um, a co a contingent teaching, as, as she called it, based on the, li the, the literature, uh, a model for scaffolding. Now, you imagine you have a group of three uh, students working on a joint project to write a, a paper about, let's say, uh, a, a Latin American country, um, in which you have to describe, of course, the economic circumstances, some of the geography and, 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 and the people living there, etc. So you have to collect all kinds of information and then compose this particular paper. Now, you can imagine that such a complex task task ne needs some guidance, uh, particularly when the students are stuck, the teacher arrives and tried, tries to, 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 to uh, help the students to, 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 to proceed on their, uh, uh, in their project. Now, first, the teacher has to, to diagnose what's the problem in the particular situation. And uh, so the teacher asks questions and the students provide answers to the questions. And then it is very important that the teacher does not jump to uh, an intervention strategy in order to solve the problem, but that the teacher proceeds to check whether the diagnosis the teacher arrives at is actually the problem the students are confronted with. So the teacher just explains what he, she or he is seeing as the problem in the particular situation and the students comment on that and uh, confirm this diagnosis or give an alternative interpretation of, the, of what they see as their problem. Gradually, there is a joint representation of the problem and then the teacher might proceed to help the students, the students in the group to find their way in their project. So this is a sort of circular approach, a cyclic approach in which teachers and students are constantly interacting and helping uh, uh, each other to, to, to understand what the problem is and how to arrive at a proper uh, solution. So you can see this is a completely different approach, uh, the constructivist approach. And there's not, it's not a situation where the teacher just provides the information, provides the, 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 the pathway to the final goal, but the, the students are actively engaged in collecting information based on a particular assignment and the teacher is just supporting them to arrive at the solution which is asked for. Okay, so uh, now we have the, the knowledge construction metaphor here. Learning as knowledge construction. The students are constructing knowledge, as I said. There's a focus on the process and also regulating the process as, as we have seen. And the, the goal is to help students to develop knowledge and skills and quality is as important as quantity. Okay, uh, a few final uh, remarks about the relationship between structure and content. Of course, both are important in a learning environment. So designing learning environments has to do with both providing a proper structure and embedding the content in that particular structure. So we have learning materials, of course, we have learning tools, and we have the assignments, the arrangements, the learning facilities. Uh, let's say, let's simply think of the, uh, the flowchart, flowchart um, uh, authorized offering in which you have to use as a designer in order to arrive at a proper learning arrangement. Okay, so... Um, uh, you can imagine when you start to write uh, a, a program in authorware that you either depart from the learning materials and give them, let's say, the, the, the primary focus or you depart from the instruments you have at your disposal as a designer, these nodes in the flowchart and just arrange them to arrive at a pro an appropriate design. So the focus might be different. Uh, there might be a primary focus on structure or there might be a primary focus on content, but both, of course, interact and are relevant in order to arrive at a proper uh, learning environment. So these were some preliminary uh, reflections um, in which we, we tried to relate the, this particular model, module 
uh, to the module on uh, on learn on, on perspectives on learning and instruction and at the end of this module we will return to this unit to to see whether we have in fact uh, whether we are able to 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 situate particular uh, examples we are going to study in this um, in this arrangement of 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 three perspectives on learning